Hey, Redcon Raider here. Today's video is dedicated to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. With special thanks to Revenant, a nerd in war paint, Antonio Hernandez, Ice Storm Shadow, Nathan Welch Jr., and Valenrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, let's get started. And welcome back to Wasteland 3, as we uh, resume our exploration of the Denver Ruins. Though, before we actually get to that, we do have a bit more talking to get through. We need to uh, catch up with Valor real quick, see what his deal is, and have another one-on-one uh, -on -one chat with Mother Nancy over there. Obviously, we have no real reason to trust her, but um, I would like to see what else she has to say. After that, we've uh, got a cult to crush. That'll be a nice little reward. So, you're the Rangers. I hear you've been showing the Marshals how it's done. Keep it up and maybe Daddy will make you his chief bootlickers. Well, you can go back and tell Saul I'm staying here. The Gippers are my family now. Yeah, I'm sure that'll go uh, exactly how you think it will. How'd you end up with the Gippers, anyway? Huh. My father sent me here as punishment for being smarter than him. Stupidest thing he ever did. Yep, I will agree. It was not a great choice on his part. Okay, let's um, treat Valor with kid gloves here. There's no point in riling him or the Gippers up just yet. You're, uh, doing all right here, though, it seems. <laughs> Damn right I am. The Gippers understand my worth. They're not blind like my father. I'm the foremost tech and computer expert in the world. You name it, I've taken it apart, put it back together, and made it better. He's always been like this. A boaster and a braggart. Just a tiny investment in hardware, and I could have given my father access to all the Hundred Family's records and secrets. No, but he wasn't going to shell out for any tech unless it could kill someone. <laughs> idiot. To be fair, that's not entirely inaccurate. I mean, um, again, based on what we've seen, Saul does have his good and bad points, and, uh, one of his bad points is definitely that he has an over-reliance on shows of strength and sort of brute force solutions. It is entirely possible that Saul would have been a whole lot more effective and dangerous if he had actually enabled Valor here instead of constantly putting him down. Sounds like your dad didn't appreciate your talents. <laughs> He's blind. All drive and no vision. Yeah, what was your dad thinking, sending a genius like you away? <laughs> Liberty attacked Colorado Springs, and the city alarms didn't go off, so he blamed me. He said I fucked up. I didn't fuck up. Those alarms were sabotaged. <laughs> sabotaged. Sabotaged? But by who? My sister! She stole the codes from my room before she left! It was her fault, not mine! Yeah, yeah, uh, he's not wrong. She told us pretty much the same exact thing. Sounds like you've got a grudge against Colorado Springs. <laughs> idiots! <laughs> they're all idiots! They think they're the center of civilization! No, not without oil, they're not. <laughs> Let's see how civilized they are a few months from now. Look, as much as I'd like to see the, uh, hundred families get taken down a peg or two, causing the entire city to suffer in the interim seems like overkill. We decoded some data from your room in the Patriarch's Palace. You finished the calculation? 
how... I mean, that's great. Uh, good. Uh, this will really speed things up. Um, I guess I should thank you. Here. It's been a while, but from what I recall, that was a formula for a stimulant for uh, treating depression and sleep disorders or just staying up longer. I suppose the real question is whether it's something that would actually help him or something he just thinks would help him. That hardware looks really old. Is it hard using it to set up a mind-body transfer? Oh, that's an understatement. The infrastructure around here is fine for pumping oil and powering the defense systems, but we're trying to usher in the next era in human-to-god interfaces. It's pushing this building systems to the limit. Yep, that uh, just continues to reinforce my theory that um, this is all just a glorified missile defense system. I'm also fairly certain the transfer device is a reference to the Mind Link from the original Wasteland. One of uh, Finster's toys. If I could just squeeze out some extra power, we could supercharge Reagan's statue and still have enough juice for the transfer process. The upgrades don't require a genius like me. <laughs> Even you could do it. If you want to make some extra money, I'll pay you to handle them. And there are also some system parts which would become redundant. You can have those, too. Um, hmm. Well, obviously that might not be in our best interest if, um, things go south with the Gippers. Which, let's be honest, they almost certainly will. But I suppose worst case scenario, we could always just dismantle the statue manually if it comes down to it. And this would help us get in a bit better with the Gippers in the short term. Yeah, yeah, we'll do it. Three terminals manage our key systems. Everything from the Reagan statue's weapons to heating the building. Two are in this building, but one's near the statue. Look at each terminal, figure out the problem, fix it. Simple. We have the wealth of Colorado beneath our feet, Rangers. And you've seen our wonders firsthand. You will be fairly compensated for any work you do. Gosh, 200 whole dollars, huh? <laughs> Though, to be fair, we uh, could actually use those laser turrets. Could you uh, give us a good reason not to drag you back to the Patriarch right now? The automated turrets? The protection of the Gipper himself? All the Nancys who swore to defend me? All three of them? can't help noticing you're planning on having everyone else fight for you. Well, I never claimed to be a fighter, but here, I don't need to be. That is fair. See you later, Valor. <laughs> Not if I see you first. Ooh, scary. All right, let's go uh, optimize those systems real quick. That might make uh, Mother Nancy a bit more forthcoming during our chat. Hard drive capacity, 4 megabytes. System fragmentation, 96%. Days since defrag, 3,422. Press D to defragment hard disk. Press F to force boot. Warning, system integrity may be compromised. The nearby guard is watching you closely. Told you before, partners, access to this console is restricted by order of the Nancys. You're a heck of a guard, but that won't matter when this system fails Ronnie. What? No, I, I didn't even realize it. What should I do? Just press the D button. Oh, shoot! I didn't even notice. Oh, thanks a million, sir. Defragmentation started. Defragmentation complete. Yeah, yeah, I'd say that sounds about right for a four megabyte hard drive. 
The future! Terminal 2 of 3. Temperature regulation. All systems within acceptable tolerances. A large handwritten note dominates the top of this terminal. No touching by order of the Nancys. This terminal appears to be regulating CPU temperatures for the Reagan statue, the sacred server room, and other important electronics. Upgrading this terminal will increase the Reagan statue's combat effectiveness. Sabotaging it could damage or destroy the statue. You spend a few minutes investigating the terminal. We will modify the algorithms to self-optimize over time. Without modifying the core code, you're able to adjust the program's measurement algorithms so it will become more efficient over time. You spend a little extra time putting in conditionals to prevent the machine from accidentally achieving sentience. Just in case. You know what? Yeah, that um, does sound like a good redundancy. The last thing we need around here is another sentient screensaver. Right. Last one should be near the statue. Oh, looks like audio triggers might be misfiring. Let me just uh, reset real quick to fix that. There we go. We should be good. Yep, that's our last terminal. Let's go knock that out. Temperature warning. System throttling engaged to avoid hardware damage. Please defrost heating elements. Okay, seems simple enough. Thank you, Ian. A new well. A dirty cassette covered with a sheen of oil. Boss, praise the Gipper, we struck oil! What? When? Just now. Remember the test wells we were drilling out in Zone 5? The last one came up a gusher. The foreman thinks there could be enough for a hundred and... Great, great. Now, shut it down. Wait, what? Mother Nancy Reliance has spoken. We're cutting off the oil supply to the godless commies in Colorado Springs. So we're suspending operations immediately. I... but... the oil! The oil's been there for a million years. It ain't going anywhere. Cap the well, and I'll forget about your brief crisis of faith in our sacred leadership. Understood. Hmm, that's interesting. It um, doesn't really tell us anything we didn't already know. But it is uh, very noteworthy that uh, they refer to Colorado Springs as being communists. Because, um, as we have seen in multiple conversations now, their ultimate intent is to wipe out everyone they consider to be communists. Which is pretty much everyone that's not them. Terminal 3 of 3. Temperature warning. Low power mode engaged to avoid hardware damage. Please defrost heating elements. Yeah, I am uh, fairly certain we already did that. What else? Systems operational. Low power mode on. Self-destruct mode off. <laughs> Subtle. All right, let's crank it up. No point in tipping our hand just yet. Now running at full power. A crudely rendered lightning bolt appears on screen, followed by a smiling face. Warning, insufficient power. Warning, system failure imminent. 
Warning. Unknown warning. Warnings flash across the screen. Between perimeter defenses, the heating system, and your previous upgrades, the Gipper's power grid has been stretched to its limit. That final upgrade was one step too far. We will rebalance the entire system in 30 seconds. It comes down to the wire, but you pull it off. Somehow, all the systems are perfectly in balance. Rooting extra power to target. Statue of Almighty Reagan. I feel stronger. Neat. Glad to help, big guy. Come back soon, Rangers. Um, how about right now? Because that is where we are headed. Yes, me. So, um, about those system upgrades. What about them? Is this work actually important, or are we just helping you keep the lights on? In this springtime of hope, some lights seem eternal. America's is. Hush, Ronnie. The answer to both questions is yes. You have only seen a fraction of the statute's full power. If our systems are upgraded, we can unleash its full potential and complete the transfer of Ronnie's consciousness into a human body. However, obtaining the cybernetic transfer module is still our top priority. Okay, well, we have uh, finished upgrading your system. Wow! Yes, I'm just seeing the readings now. Huh, that's pretty good work. Here's the money Mother Reliance set aside for the upgrades, and the parts we don't need anymore. Thanks. This will help us out a lot. Thank you kindly. See you around, Valor. <laughs> Not if I see you first. Yeah, good luck with that. Immortal Complex Terminal. Oh, hold on. Okay, so that is Project Immortal. That is uh, one of the things on that mysterious list we found back at uh, Union Station. That's cool. You tap a key and the battered console's screen flickers on. Project Immortal Complex, Master Terminal. No modules detected. StarStationWars.exe Hmm. A small screen pops up. Missiles streak down from space, striking a planet below. You watch it for a moment before realizing you're supposed to stop them. You don't do half bad, but there are soon more missiles than you can handle. Your star station explodes. Oh, foolishness. I don't know who put that game on Ronnie's console, but it is an utter waste of time. Mother Nancy Reliance shakes her head. You turn back to the screen just in time to see the high scores screen close, and the initials MNR at the very top. Game over. Returning to main menu. That woman is playing Galaga. Didn't think we'd notice, but we did. Nancy? You don't appear to have the module. Why have you returned? We found a talking car that told us it was President Reagan's limousine before it got trapped underground during the war. A talking limousine? How absurd. 
Sounds like a ploy by those commie computers to abduct my beloved Ronnie. I hope you destroyed the abomination. Um, yes. Yes, I suppose technically we did. We did destroy the limo. Good. A fitting end. Right. Once again, Mother Nancy uh, wanting to destroy anything that might challenge her authority. She is not very subtle. Now, was there anything else before you returned to the task of acquiring the module? Sister Glory asked us to handle your Godfisher problem. Anything we should know? Sister Glory means well, but we can handle a few scattered plain savages. You stay focused on getting the module and resolving our deal. Yeah, about that. We have questions about the mission. Bring us the cybernetic transfer module. Then we'll restore the flow of oil to Colorado Springs and release our claim on Valor Buchanan. Is any part of that unclear? Oh, let's not... Let's not pick that first one. That would be asking for trouble. Who's the uh, lucky recipient of Reagan's brain? We are reviewing the health and fitness of numerous candidates. Uh-huh. I'll bet. Can you explain what a cybernetic transfer module is, exactly? I mean, obviously I know. I, I just want to see if you know. Our young Mr. Buchanan is handling the technical side of things. Valor, dearest... Could you please explain the details of the module for our guests? I don't have time for this, but if you insist. The module was built to create a direct connection between a human brain and a machine intelligence. It was scrapped after it overwrote a researcher's brain, <laughs> allegedly. I'm inclined to believe that was human error, or a weak-minded subject. The design specifications are incomplete, but I know enough to fill in the gaps. Clearly, the device is meant to transfer information to a human mind, not overwrite it. The corner of Reliance's mouth twitches in a secret smile. Okay, okay. Thank you, Valor. That was an excellent summation. This transfer capability is precisely what we need to move the God President into a human body. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, could I ask you about something else? Yes. We have questions about the Gippers. Outsiders always do. Ask away. We met a woman called the Wyman, who claimed she was once a Nancy. What happened there? Wyman is the name used for a former Nancy who has schemed against the God President, one who has spurned his great gifts and fallen from grace. Fortunately, there have been few Wymans over the years. That particular Wyman claimed I was misinterpreting the God President's pronouncements for my own benefit. Nothing but jealousy. Were it up to me, she would have been cast out entirely. What? You? Doing something for your own benefit? What? No. No. Lucky for her, my Ronnie is a merciful god. He merely divorced her, thus making her a Wyman. She is permitted to remain on the premises because of her medical skills. But holy ground like the sacred server room is forever forbidden to her. Right, right. Uh, because she is conveniently still useful, she gets to stay, but loses all of her rights and privileges. That, uh, that does seem very convenient. I can't help but notice that uh, young Valor here is also conveniently filling in a vital role, once filled by a former Nancy, who was also presumably removed by Mother Reliance. So many duplicitous Nancys. When will it end? Well, thank goodness we uh, still have this one here that we can rely on. Heck, it's right in her name. I can't help but wonder uh, how long it'll be before Valor outlives his usefulness. 
or us for that matter. As we have seen, uh, Mother Reliance definitely does not shy away from the idea of uh, banishing or even just outright executing people once they're no longer useful to her. Hey, uh, why is Valor with you? He is a brilliant computer technician who feels as strongly as we do that the God President must have a new vessel. Without him and his knowledge, the transfer would be impossible. Ha! <laughs> oh, Dad's gonna shit his pants when he meets the new Reagan face to face. It's gonna be awesome. I'm actually pretty sure Saul would just crush him with a sledgehammer, but, uh, yeah, sure. Whatever you say, kid. How did the Gippers come to be? In the days after the godless communists rained fire and death from sea to shining sea, the God President awoke in the ruins of the city on the hill and mourned the loss of the world he'd built and the loss of his wife. So mighty was his grief, so heartbreaking his suffering, that it was heard across the gray and burning world. Men raged with him at the dying of the light, and women wept at his loneliness. But one woman did more. She healed his wounds and gave him solace. In gratitude, the God President named her Nancy, the first Nancy. Then he led her to this building, dubbed it the Western White House, and decreed that it would be the heart of America Reborn. Hmm. Are the Nancys the God President's wives, or is it more like a title? We are his wives, and we all hold positions of great responsibility in his government. It is the highest honor in the land. Some of us are warriors, like Sister Nancy Glory, standing strong against the barbarian hordes. Others are scientists and technicians. Sister Nancy Forge, for instance, built many of our weapons and defensive systems. All of us serve Reagan to the best of our abilities and work to prepare the next generation of wives to serve him likewise when we die. It is our sacred duty. Yep, which we uh, pretty much heard about when we talked with poor Bill. They tried to press gang his mother into becoming one of the god wives, and then essentially stole her child and banished her when she refused. Why are you mother when the rest of the Nancys are sister? The sisters protect the god president's people and enforce his laws. I protect the god president himself and I interpret his wisdom. This has been the honor and the duty of every Mother Nancy since the first. We brief the God President on state and business issues, disputes between citizens, and once he speaks on them, we put the intent of his words into action. Uh-huh. You interpret the intent of Reagan's words. Doesn't that kind of make you the actual leader here? You mean that I could interpret Ronnie's words in any way I wished? That he is just a figurehead, and I am making all the decisions? Yeah, pretty much. Ridiculous! For one who has been at his side for half a century, the God President's intent is always perfectly clear. I am only his wife. I have no power but that which passes from him through me and no ambition but to serve him well. Well, I guess I'm convinced. I apologize for impugning your honor. Goodbye, Mother Nancy. She is one million percent a bad guy. But she has positioned herself, as most intelligent bad guys do, in a position where we simply cannot afford to just remove her. So we will uh, go grab this cybernetic module and wait for an opportunity. In the meantime, though, I believe we have some uh, much less intelligent bad guys who are in dire need of our attention.
keep an eye. Tommy's on him. Just gotta pray hard. All right, let's go uh, start working our way through these ruins. Go fishing for a few godfishers. I think it's pretty safe to say those guys have no redeeming features. Uh, recycling, maybe. Hold, heretics! Before you step into our trap. Are you the godfisher whom Reliance released? You have fine ears. I hope one day to send them skyward so they may delight the gods of the sky. However, first we have a proposal for you. The mechanical giant known as Reagan kills our faithful, delaying the harvest. You have access to the Gipper's inner sanctum. It has three glowing hearts known as terminals. You will destroy these terminals, so we may sweep across this land, making gifts of flesh to the sky. In return, you may pass through our camps without fear. We will not harm you. Well, that is a very compelling offer. I especially like the part where you literally just told me that you wanted to turn me into a kite and shoot me into the sky so that my ears could please the gods. Yeah, you know what? Um, I don't think there's really any debate here. There is really no moral reason to side with these guys. Gods of the sky, forgive them their foolishness. When their flesh feeds you, they shall be redeemed. Oh no, they are going to turn us into kites for not cooperating. That's much worse than being turned into kites for cooperating and having nice ears. Okay. Let's head up top. I think that's the best place for us to set ourselves up. Yeah, yeah, we can get up there through the uh, goat pen. Whoop. Okay, stop. Got guys? Screw it. I think we all saw where that was going. Time for a good old fashioned knock down, drag out gunfight. About time. got two up top, one sniper, one melee. Let's get long way on that. Get some good use out of those deployables. Huh. Did they increase the uh, deployment cost on those things? I want to say they used to be cheaper. <laughs> really got to get more range extenders. finish clearing the right.
Okay, let's uh, finish that guy near center. slow this guy down. Very nice. Fall back. shot. Oh yeah, we've got another sniper up there. Totally missed that one. Mood point now. <laughs> All right, I think we've pretty much got this. That's nice. And I believe that just leaves this guy up top. I think we're safe here. Wow, I am. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I really thought that would do more damage. Well, now we are in a bit of a pickle because that guy has himself entrenched in a corner. Let's try this. <laughs> Wait. That's not right. There we go. Yeah, I think I just underestimated the armor on these guys. Pazepi?
Thanks, Rangers. You're welcome. Well, a couple of bumps and bruises, but that builds character. At least we all stayed on our feet. Thanks, dude. You're welcome. Ugh. So gross. What comes after? Serious considerations on what is to come after the apocalypse. You ever wonder, like, what you'd do if the world ended? You mean, like, some kind of apocalypse or something? Yeah, like, the world explodes, civilization collapses. What do you do? I mean, obviously, you've got to grab the planetary fragments that give you the best chance of survival. Obviously. But which ones? Like, do you start with one that's got a bunker on it, or go for one that's got a lot of water? Nah, man. You gotta think big. Go for the fragments that still got, like, nukes and shit. Then you can conquer everyone else's fragments and take their stuff. Whoa, that's pretty hardcore. Post-apocalypse ain't for the weak, man. <laughs> I wonder if that's uh, a conversation with the first Mother Nancy. Desert Rangers have arrived in Denver. Stay tuned for more developments. Wait, is Infamous the bad one? They always forget. Hey, I think that's actually the uh, radio trigger that was supposed to uh, fire off when we came out of the Gipper's stronghold just a bit ago. I guess it eventually ended up firing after all. And what do we have here? Seek peace and prosperity through strength. If you insist. Cool. Optical spectrometer. This sensor analyzes light frequencies around the user, making it easier to spot fine details and hidden objects. It's for perception. Hmm. Well, obviously the uh, spectrometer is not much of a find. Plus four perception is nothing. But there's some other nice stuff in there. Think we got everything? I see we've got a safe and an ice block ahead of us, too. Let's knock these guys out, crack that loot, and I think we'll be at a good stopping point. Come on. Come on. Yep. <laughs> Should have seen that coming. That's fine, though. It's just two guys.
Gun Bunny, you are right in my way. Let's see if we can slow this guy down. Um, yes, I, I believe he is slightly slower now. Good job, long way. Yikes, that, uh, that saw pup was not with us long, but he made the most of his time. Also, why did the camera shift out here? It seemed like they really wanted us to see these crashed trucks, but I have no idea why. Hmm. Nothing of particular note. the heat. Morning the music. A discussion on the music lost to the world. Yeah, yeah, I can get behind that. Man, I've been thinking, you know what the biggest tragedy of the apocalypse was? The music. Oh, yeah, absolutely, what a waste. Like jazz, for example. It was amazing, and now it's dead forever. Oh, yeah, totally passe. I'm into waster punk. It's played with a theremin. You probably never heard of it. What? No, I mean... Ugh, forget it, fucking hipster. I... do not know how to process that. And on that confusing note, I believe we have hit a good breakpoint. Uh, we've obviously still got more godfishers to kill, so we will uh, jump right into that next time around. Get some nice, solid combat right off the bat. I will say, these guys are uh, slightly hardier than I assumed they would be, considering that uh, we're slightly above level for this region. Just a skosh. That said, um, let's hit the pause button for now, but we will pick up here next time. As we uh, continue working our way through the ruins of Denver and continue reducing the godfishers to a fine red mist. See you then. Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Wasteland 3, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official social media feeds, or the official store pages. And uh, if you'd like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things. Or uh, maybe even check out the Patreon. Links are in the description.